Tuesday, the 26th of November. Welcome to Business Morning to our viewers here in Nigeria and around the world. We thank you for coming through on the show. Let's get it started here on Channels Television, Nigeria's news leader. I am Bosin Namavai, the country's sovereign wealth manager. The NSI has expressed interest in reviving the moribund Ajakuta Steel Company and other non-performing entities across the country. The NSI chief, Uchi Oji, says the agency's investment model was to focus on areas of national importance that attracts good returns and are fundable by core investors. Aochoji was providing some details about the operations of the Nigeria Sovereign Investment Authority yesterday in Abuja. Meantime, the Honorable Minister in Charge of Communications and Digital Economy, Dr. Isa Pantami, says the unhealthy relationship between telecoms regulator and its dependence on industry operators will no longer acceptable. The Honorable Minister says the existing relationship between the telecoms regulators and the operators bring compromise and is not in the best interests of consumers, says his administration is ready to put an end to that unhealthy relationship between the telecoms regulators and the telcos in the country. Meantime, listed telco giant uh, MTA Nigeria Communications yesterday unveils the trial of fifth generation technology, what they call the 5G, ahead year 2020 target set by the industry regulator. The test run will last three months on the spectrum allocated to MTA Nigeria by NCC. And today, uh, PwC Nigeria's executive session uh, is focusing on harvesting values from President Buhari's new finance bill, 2020. Uh, and sitting there is the Minister for Finance, Budget and uh, National Planning, uh, Zainab Ahmed, including others. They'll be discussing the way forward with the new finance bill. That's the big story that is getting underway as we speak. So let's get back to the business of today's monetary policy committee decisions by the central bank. The regulators uh, briefing by Godwin Emefile, the governor of the central bank, holds from 2.15 local time. Join our coverage and studio analysis by our panelists from 1.30 in the afternoon. We're opening the studio right from then till 3 o'clock, as always, to bring you up to speed. And, of course, a bit of a look back into the previous MPC decision so far this year, uh, as this will be very critical as a look forward into 2020 briefing by the financial regulator. Meantime, United Capital says uh, the, in its pre-MPC uh, pre meetings note today that investors will be on the lookout to understand the direction of yields in Nigeria Treasury bills, which is down from average 13.5% to 8.1% since last MPC was held in September. According to the Investment Bank, the M MPC, uh, the Monetary Policy Committee, will be caught between a decision to hold or ease policy stance. Easing, according to United Capital, could drive market rates lower and worsen capital outflow. Uh, United Capital concluded that we think, quote, that the MPC will most likely do nothing back in the CBA's recent unorthodox policy actions despite inflationary pressure and dwindling foreign reserves. That's part of what Noseke uh, uh, on YGD of FDC will be speaking with us so in about a minute or so. But first, let's get in through the markets and review where we finished off the first trading day of the market. The stock market added 0.16% on Monday to start. The currency will be climbed back a little bit up to the 27,000. That's been the psychological level in recent weeks for the Nigerian stock market. 27,000, 0.35, 7.8. That's the finishing line. We kept the total market value by equity side at 13.048 trillion naira. In terms of volume coming through now, that's a bit consistent with our daily average in terms of volume, value, and total transactions. That's 4,254, showing you the market breadth in terms of positive reading. But if you look at the five key sectors of the market, which were banks, consumer goods, industrials, insurance, oil and gas, you find those two green shoots there hoping or holding the market up between consumer goods 2.73% and insurance 0.39%. Banks took a bit of a beating 0.32%. 
but you find still have a lot of active trading in the banking names. Insurance uh, went up 0.39%, leaving their cousins, the, uh, the banks in the negative territory. Oil and gas was one-tenth of a percent in the negative territory, and that's not much story, not big story, really, as far as the oil and gas concerned. Just go through that, and you find where that came through, uh, about one-tenth of a percent uh, in the oil and gas sector. That was Orlando. Uh, down to 3.85, 3.85 on the counter at the closing bell, trading a little less than a million shares, 9,983,213. Nine but the big pool in terms of volume in the oil and gas space on Monday was Japan Oil Services. That's the company involved in maritime services for oil companies within the Niger Delta space. Japan traded more than 3 million shares on the day. The share price went up 5%, but that's not strong enough to upset a bigger cap company, Orlando PLC. Cap Oil PLC also lost 0.41% on the day. The rest of that sector uh, remain in the grey territory. Let's cross over to the unlisted securities market. That's your NESE over-the-counter market. Unlisted securities, 0.14%, consistent with the bigger Nigerian stock exchange, NSC, on Monday. That tells you that we had an active Monday for the, for the NSC, for the NESD. Roll that over. 1.05 million uh, units of unlisted securities traded on Monday. That's a good way to start the week. 10 transactions. Okay, look, we'll finish off with the uh, fixed income market, shall we? Where are we starting? Open market operations, Nigerian treasury bills, that's a very surprising story. The numbers are coming through on your TV screen. The open market operations, we started the week on Monday at the second market, a bit of a gentle reading, less than 40 billion. Now you see that at the bottom of your TV screen and the discount highs for the most actively traded open market operations treasury bills. Uh, let's take that out and uh, show you the NTB, uh, which is where, here we go. That's all we got on Monday. That tells you that the central bank rejigging of the marketplace is working. A single transaction, 8.55 discount high, 2.41 billion, four deals for treasuries maturing 12th of November 2020. That's uh, the day. And then you have the NARA uh, papers, which is the FGN bonds in NARA. Those are the four books actively traded uh, papers. You can see the longest is the 26th April 2049. Uh, for transactions, investors are piled I believe, into the long dated uh, papers there. So that's a bit all for the marketplace. Uh, that's on the that's market. We're going to talk about the commodities market in just a second, everyone.